Matthew Francis. I'm the consultant for Crocus Ward. My name's Valerie Thompson and I'm a clinical nurse specialist on the memory service. My name's Lynn Namaliti. Um, I am the manager for Ashmead Care Centre. I am uh, Lumi. Uh, I'm the clinical lead in Ashmead Care Centre. I'm Jenny Allingham. I work at Battersea Fields Practice on the Doddington Estate. I've been a partner here for a couple of years and I do a lot of work with the local care home at your course. My name is Wendy Abram and I am the Senior Activities Coordinator at George Potter House. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Lisa Guzman, working at George Potter House Nursing Home here at EMI. Uh, my name is Nancy Joseph. I am working George for the nearly nine years. Uh, my name is Ifedi Iwayaka. And uh, I work in Heritage Care Centre. Hi, my, man, uh, my name is Maninda. Uh, I'm working uh, on the first floor. Uh. My name is Pearl Hope. I'm a peripatetic manager for Four Seasons and currently based in York. Um, this is my first time I've ever worked with a, a BAX team, to be quite honest, um, and I, I think it's very positive. Um, I've worked in the past with a lot of residents with dementia and challenging behaviour but we never had the support that I feel that the BACS team has given me in this home. We had a good relationship, we had a lot of support from BACS team when we don't know what to do with some residents we just refer them to you. Well I think it's been fabulous, I think the whole team has found that. What we found really helpful is just having another set of eyes, another pair of hands, much more wisdom than us that are able to go into your court and see what the issues are and help us in our care planning for these patients. It's nice to have people coming in and understanding how the staff are trying to deal with someone whose dementia is so far advanced. Working here in the, with the bus people, they're fantastic. It's really amazing working with them. We get uh, too much help from the wax team and then some residents is very useful for that. It's a huge experience. The wax team, they are lovely. Uh, they give my clients support in every challenging aspect of their life and uh, I appreciate that. And it has created harmony, good understanding, both with my clients and with this stuff. Then in June I was not really confident because I thought that um, they are just talking rubbish but then finally they proved me wrong. <laughs> yes. I must say I was intrigued and surprised that such a team existed in the first place. And I was quite amazed at the high level of support that they were able to give the home. And the home was in a crisis at the time. So I like um, Bax's approach to challenging behaviour and thinking about a patient I think is more imaginative. I think they think about the context in which the behaviour happens. I think um, it's much more person-centred. I like the fact that Bax don't say our way is the right way. I think they just offer a different perspective um, and are very welcoming to other kind of opinions, um, other points of view. Uh, at the beginning probably we didn't know that challenging behaviour is a way of the residents with dementia to communicate some needs which they cannot express in another way. So this is what we learned from the box team. Um, I think you all fitted in quite well. <laughs> it was quite scary at first because no one really knew who you are and what you were, but um, over the weeks you were very consistent. They were very helpful and they will come as soon as they, they can, even uh, on that very day or in the following day. Mm -hmm. Which one is um, very reassuring for the staff, so um, we are feeling more confident um, how to manage um, challenging behaviour. The team has been highly proficient in developing constructive relationships between families of residents in your court and the staff team. Well, I must say this is very much appreciated, as discussions with a third party have led to distinct improvements in our interactions with relatives. That's a stress on my job because you help us a lot. I think it's very good. Um, we get to know the resident a lot better um, because there's a lot more one-to-one -one, um, you know with the MDT meetings and um, also getting to know the resident's background which I think is, is paramount and also the support that uh, we have with the, res uh, with the team, the BACS team, with our team. Um, 
giving them knowledge of how to look after people and giving them different ideas which maybe they wouldn't be aware of before. I think it's provided a different sort of sense of continuity and a different um, perspective mm -hmm. to before. Before it seemed a very medical system, mm. whereas now we're looking at patients in a much more holistic way and being able to work with the team has been really great because I think then it, it's broadened my ideas of, of, of how to look after my elder patients um, and it's also helped the rest of the team to sort of see the broader perspectives that we should be looking at from, which has been really, really excellent. Um, they've brought a wealth of knowledge They've actually been able to share their expertise. There's a good skill mix and lots of expertise within um, their service. Also, it's not about the medical model. There's actually looking at other psychological therapies and other ways to manage really challenging, difficult behaviour. They are adjuncts to the care we provide and they have integrated with the home's staff. And they're always at the end of the phone for me to provide professional advice on how to respond when things become quite difficult. Finding something that clicks with a resident and the staff, I, I believe, feel very, very comfortable with that, that you're here to support them in that. If they have any ideas that you're very approachable and yeah. Yeah, you're very gentle in the way you ask people things. I think there's something about the fact that it's a multidisciplinary team, you're obviously very good at what you do, there's a lot of expertise there and you're coming at it from a different model to the one that maybe as GPs were used to. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to spend more time with these very difficult patients and to spend more time with their carers, I think that in particular is the thing that I've noticed. You've got such a great understanding of the interactions that are going on in the home on a day-to-day -day basis, which I just can't do in a quick in and out mm -hmm. visit. You've got much more continuity of care. You get to know the carers. And I think that only benefits the patients in the long run and also their families. I think that gives them a security and a knowledge that we really are putting their best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. um, from what I understand from the BACS model, it's really getting to know the individual um, learning about their history, learning about what makes them have challenging behaviour um, and, and really working around that because there's always a reason for the challenging behaviour and it's, it's, I think it's really good in that um, it teaches us how to empathise with that resident. As soon as they step in, they take over the resident and they plan the care that we follow and this a uh, care plan works like magic. There's one I thought I would not be able to manage, but with the help of the bus, honestly speaking, this man is now quiet and calm, mm -hmm. and the family is happy, and we are happy as well as a whole. So we work as a team with the bus. I think thinking about the context in which the behaviours happen, the the situation that the person finds themselves in, how that might influence their behaviour. I like also that uh, everyone involved in the person's life is drawn in and, and asked their opinion and they have a, their view is taken into account, um, which I think is very, very helpful. Now the back team in your court has had a hugely beneficial effect on how the staff team operates. They have seen how expertise can be put into practice. Uh, the back team are also committed to their work and have become an extension of the home staff team. Now we know more about how to manage uh, uh, clients with dementia, um, aggressive clients, um, depression, yes. Uh, which we find it uh, very challenging, but they, they show us uh, ways. And I'm really happy because uh, they are not jumping straight away to, to give pills. Yes. Um, they are trying um, to manage by behavior. With the help of the bar, it may be confident, with my, confident in working with this uh, dementia people. I like the principle that it's, we don't we can, if we can avoid medication, we do, um, and it's all behavioural um, therapy, which is excellent. It has influenced my practice in, a, in that I'm not afraid of any challenging behaviour at the moment, <laughs> so, so long as I know that 
uh, once I follow the principles of the bags, and uh, definitely the client will settle down. Yeah. It's only a, a couple of time, and uh, the changes will start. And uh, I am very happy. The bags has given me support and confidence yeah. in dealing with people with dementia in my unit. Honestly speaking, I am grateful, and I thank the bags for what they do. Okay. When I think about some of the patients on the ward and their challenging behaviour. Automatically now, we tend, I tend to think of who else inv is involved in their life, what is the meaning of this in terms of not just what are they communicating, it's why are they communicating it now in this way? Um, yes, it's made me think about looking at a patient from the beginning of their journey, from when they arrive to us to the very end, and looking at how we can manage that. And it's not just about the medication, it's not just about the family is about supporting them with any difficulties and we can actually, I feel I can go to my colleagues and talk about things if I have any difficulties. Personally, my own practice, I now am much more aware of trying to see what might be distressing somebody mm. rather than just okay. thinking of a physical presentation like pain, what might be underlying that rather than just seeing the surface clinical symptoms. Think we should call her Fluffy. Yeah. You put us all to shame with your singing. You like her? Yeah. Should we keep her? Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep Fluffy. Yeah. And, and just an additional question, just to see, does anyone know who the, does anybody know the name of um, the Queen's son? Andrew. Uh, yeah, I think that is right, I don't actually know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly know someone else. You know who Andrew is. That's right, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Bring back, bring back, oh bring back my body to me, to me, bring that something has happened to it so that we only get simple stuff now instead of reasonable ones like we used to have. How did you feel before the group? Sure. Not very. Not able to enjoy it. Yeah, you didn't feel very lonely. No, I felt lonely. Lonely? Oh! Which one? This one? Yeah. Sad face? Yeah. And how do you feel now? You've been in the group. Oh, that's wonderful. Right. Yeah, so this one. Yeah. So coming to the group made you feel a bit oh, better. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's really nice feedback. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London town. I get a funny feeling inside of me Just walking 